Hey, what's up you guys? It's Bjorn from Triassic Park Tribes. I just came back from our holidays, uh, well, several weeks ago. And uh, I was planning on doing a new video for you guys. I actually already made a tutorial on how to set up a little uh, Triops setup. But this time I'm going to do a new updated version, 2022 version. And... Um, well, I'm going to take you guys through the whole process. Uh, first off, I also wanted to say that these products aren't sponsored. I paid for everything, um, but I really appreciate uh, the <clears throat> Danale products. So that's why I actually wanted to include them in the video because I just needed some uh, stuff to actually show you guys what kind of materials you're going to uh, look for or if you want to look for. And... Um, so that's basically what I'm going to do next. Um, I'm going to describe what kind of stuff we're going to use uh, to set up the Triops Aquarium. And uh, first off, I would like to uh, start off with the glass aquarium. I picked a 25 liters glass aquarium. It's a 6.6 .6 gallon uh, aquarium for my American viewers. Um, this aquarium is old. I already used it for a couple of years, but it's a fine aquarium. So I'm going to use it again as well for this video to set it up again. Um, before there was a colony of Australians arm inside it, I harvested the eggs, it's clean now, so I'm going to use it again. Um, next up is, uh, we're going to take a look at all the equipment that I put over here. Uh, I'm going to describe what I use it for, and um, it's going to give you an idea what kind of stuff you're going to need to actually um, build the perfect climate for your tribes inside that little glass aquarium. You could go really bare on it. That's that's also possible, but I prefer some uh, electronic stuff to make uh, make the aquarium look a little bit better. Heat it up, give it a proper light source and stuff. Uh, you could also like use a, a tiny uh, or like a larger um, plastic storage bin, but I prefer an aquarium because it provides uh, an amazing view on the traps, and you can actually have a way nicer look at your traps as well. So. First off, um, you can see uh, I got some filters over here. These are the Denale corner filters. We have the XL version and a small version. I'm going to use the large version, which is this one. This is a larger one. Uh, it has a lot, m a double uh, the amount of um, storage room for uh, biological media, which I'm going to tell a little bit more about in the, later in the video. This is the small version, but I kind of think it's a little bit too small for this aquarium, so I always use the XL version. This is the head of the um, filter. This is going to be the intake. This is go the place where the water enters the filter, and this is going to be the exit of the uh, uh, filter. So this is where the water comes from. Um, it can be placed inside the corner of my aquarium. It's um, a little bit more tidy looking. You can also use sponge filters. They work great as well, but I also always prefer these kind of uh, little box filters that can be placed inside the aquarium, inside the corner, and you don't have like uh, a lot of uh, loss of space as well. So that's basically the filter part. You're going to need a filter because the filter is going to clean the water for you. There will be beneficial bacteria inside your filter that will also do something with the with the uh, water chemistry as well. But I will possibly do another video on that subject later because that's uh, quite a large subject and it needs quite a lot of time which I'm not going to use in this video for right now. Um, so next up, we're going to use a heater. This is a heating rod. Uh, this is for heating up the aquarium when it's going to be uh, like an evening. Uh, my room temperature is going to be uh, going down. So I'm going to use a heater to keep the water temperature at the constant um, temperature. And that's going to be uh, beneficial for the traps as well. So um, next up, we got some... Uh, cords over here. This is from the LED light that's inside the aquarium. It's inside this um, lid over there. Um, I got some, uh, they look like sticks. Um, these are, um, this is a TDS meter. It's uh, used to uh, measure the amount of mineral content or like content at all what's inside your uh, water. So it's going to be, um, well, I'm using it for, uh, to measure the TDS. It's the total dissolved solids. This is a pH meter. This is what I use to measure the pH of my aquariums. So that's basically the kind of uh, electronical stuff that I'm going to use. 
just a little bit short, but that's what um, I hope this is going to give you guys a little idea of what kind of tech you're going to need to set up your aquarium. For this filter, I'm also going to use a little extension. You can buy this for um, the uh, filters from Denale. This thing is going to be uh, attached to the filter and you can fill it up with this uh, filter uh, gravel that's going to house more beneficial bacteria that will break down nasty stuff in your aquarium. Basically cleaning up your filter a little bit better. So that's about the tech guys. Um, uh, next thing is going to be um, aquarium gravel. Um, obviously you're going to need something like a substrate where the traps are able to gonna, going to be able to dig in. I'm going to use black quartz gravel for this. Um, it's a small size gravel and uh, the traps really enjoy digging in this stuff and laying their eggs inside it. I use a certain uh, grain of uh, aquarium gravel to make sure that I actually can use a sieve to harvest the eggs from uh, the gravel as well. I prefer black because it's uh, nice with a black background that I'm going to add to the aquarium background uh, later. Um, so I really like the dark uh, look inside the aquarium where the triops uh, colors will pop out a little bit better. So that's why I'm using black gravel. But I'm going to use this gravel later when I'm going to set up the aquarium. So I'm going to put this back where it came from. Um, next up is going to be, uh, we're going to set up the aquarium and uh, I will take you through all the steps guys. So I went ahead and I installed the aquarium. It's like I said, it's a 25 liter aquarium, 6.6 .6 gallons for the Americans. I installed the filter in the corner. I added the heater and I actually forgot one thing. Uh, there is a, a little, uh, oxygen stone in the left corner this is to oxygenate the water it's attached to a little air pump but I also using this pump for my uh, 60 liter aquarium over here and um, this is the little air pump over here so that's why I didn't show it in the equipment part but it's attached to the aquarium now so that's fine um, what I wanted to add to this part is I also added a black background to the back of my glass back of the aquarium um, I do this for aesthetics it's not necessary but I prefer to have a black background it's uh, it will make the traps pop out a little bit more so that's why I'm using a black background uh, next up we'll be adding the gravel to the aquarium I'm gonna speed up that part because it's kind of boring of course So now the aquarium is filled, it's going to be the next step to add some decoration to the aquarium. I'm going to use some spider wood, a rock, this is katepa bark and I use it as a little home for the traps. This is also some spider wood but it's a little bit older, you can see that the color will change over time, it will be dark brown. This piece is fairly new, it's boiled before I'm going to add it to the aquarium. Always make sure to boil your wood because there could be stuff inside that you actually don't want in your aquarium. And uh, if you boil your wood, it will actually help with uh, floating up again. Because if you buy new wood, it will always float. Um, that's also why I'm adding this uh, rock to the wood to make sure it's going to stay down as well. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, install everything. Last but not least, I will add a shrimp for luck. You can add this to your tank. It's not necessary, but it's optional. Next step is going to be as well uh, adding this magnet. You can add it to your aquarium glass to clean your aquarium glass. It's optional, but you can also add it to your aquarium. I will add, do that later. So next step is going to be adding some uh, of the decoration to your aquarium. Also make sure that you add of you place your uh, aquarium uh, decorations carefully because traps will always try to dig near these objects. Make sure that you don't build like giant castles of rock because traps will actually start to dig inside that uh, substrate. The substrate might become unstable and your uh, beautiful uh, castle made of rocks will also be able to collapse cracking your glass, breaking your aquarium. So make sure that you always make uh, be careful with placing your decoration. Also make sure that you don't build any contraptions where your traps might get stuck and die because uh, traps are pretty acrobatic, but they can fold themselves uh, into the craziest uh, spots. So make sure you don't make too tiny places where they can actually get stuck. So I'm gonna go ahead, add some decoration to the aquarium.
next step is going to be adding some water to the aquarium. I'm going to use a 50% uh, basis of reverse osmosis water. This is water that came from my tap, but it went through a special filter that will actually remove all types of minerals and stuff from the water, making it a zero TDS water type. It's really similar to rainwater. I'm gonna need this because if I'm gonna work with only tap water, I found out that I'm gonna had I actually had some problems. So I'm going to use a 50% reverse osmosis water basis, and I'm going to use another bucket of water, but I'm going to fill it up with tap water. In my country, we actually don't have that much chlorine in our water, only when they are actually cleaning out the pipes sometimes. But there are some countries where they actually put chlorine inside the water, tap water, to actually make it. Um, safe for humans but if there is any kind of chlorine inside your aquarium water it will actually kill your uh, inhabitants and your plants as well so you can actually use some products for this again not sponsored i'm just buying this stuff because i need it you can use some uh, tetra aqua safe i was using this product before but it actually adds some stuff to the aquarium and um, you can actually get some extra algae from this stuff so i started using sarah aquaton instead it also adds some minerals to the water so make sure you don't go uh, too crazy on with the stuff use the recommended dosage on the back of the bottle um, this stuff actually needs some time to process as you can see there are some little um, um, components in tap water that are perfectly safe for us but not so safe for fish and shrimp uh, i reckon i would say it's not so so safe for traps as well obviously so we're going to use this product to actually uh, make our tap water safe for aquatic life i definitely recommend to do this guys uh, if you're not completely sure about your uh, uh, contents of your tap water you can also reach back to the company you're getting your water from and actually ask them what kind of minerals there are inside your uh, aquarium for in your, inside your tap water sometimes they will give you a sheet that will actually uh, show you what kind of uh, minerals they measured inside your tap water make use of that because you get actually a lot of information about your tap water that way so i'm going to go ahead pour this water inside the aquarium uh, i'm going to use a little plastic uh, lid as well this is used to actually make sure that the aquarium gravel is not going to um going to uh, move everywhere and going to just go, going to pour the water like inside the aquarium really slowly on side that plastic lid to make sure that um, not my that my aquarium gravel is, isn't going to move around that much so that's just a little tip you can use a plastic uh, lid something else just to make sure that the water is going to enter the aquarium slowly and uh, just to make it not that cloudy because there is sometimes some dirt or stuff inside your uh, aquarium gravel you can also choose to um, uh, wash and rinse off your aquarium gravel first uh, I did that as well so uh, I expect not too much cloudiness in my aquarium not completely sure if everything got out but we're gonna see that uh, very soon so I'm gonna go ahead and pour the water inside the aquarium right now So once everything is set up you can basically decide to move around some gravel, move around the decoration stuff. As you can see the little hut fell over so I'm going to try to put that back right now. Ah, I can't reach it, I'm sorry guys. I will do that a little bit later but you get the idea. Um, the set aquarium has been set up right now, uh, the bubbler is working so it's going to uh, add uh, a lot of extra oxygen into the water column. Uh, next step is going to be setting up uh, the hatchery which we are going to add to the aquarium. The reason why I use an aquarium is because I'm practicing the floating hatchery method. If you want to know more about how the floating hatchery 
uh, method works. There is another video on my channel that you can watch. I will you add the link over here, and um, you can you watch that video on how to uh, exactly set up the hatchery. Uh, I will uh, do a little bit on the hatchery in this video as well. But if you need like an in-depth guide, I would like to recommend watching that video as well. Next thing you can also do is add some plants to the aquarium. Uh, I will do this right now. Um, I'm going to add some marmo moss balls and some floating plants to this aquarium. You can also go for the Elodia oxygen plant, Nubias, Java ferns. There are quite a lot of plants uh, in the hobby that you can use for your Triops aquarium. I'm going to go ahead and add some little floating plants and uh, moss balls to the aquarium now. Be right back. I just went ahead, added some floating plants, added some marmo moss balls into the aquarium. This is just for, um, you could see it's as decoration, but it's also for uh, maintaining the water quality a little bit. These plants will actually suck up nutrients from the aquarium. Also, the waste products from your traps will actually be some kind of fertilizers for your plants. These moss balls are just little uh, grazing pads for the traps. I really like these little green dot balls. And... Um, I got some floating plants. These are uh, Amazon frogbit, some duckweed, and uh, that's basically to help uh, maintaining the aquarium, removing the nitrates that are coming from the filter, basically. And that's a waste product of um, your uh, trap poop, basically. Uh, if you want to know a little bit more about how the filter works, I could recommend to watch uh, some other YouTube videos about the whole nitrogen cycle in an aquarium that's basically what it's called um i'm not going to go through that right now because i really want to uh, keep it to setting up the traps tank right now um so that's everything uh what i usually put inside aquarium oh wait not everything i almost forgot something really important uh we got a nice environment already right now uh, but it needs some processing so this aquarium needs like about two weeks of time to kind of cycle in the water needs to get like um, processed through the filter uh, these materials and decorations are going to do some things to the aquarium and uh, to the water parameters as well uh, this wood is going to really is going to release a brown um, stain color to the water which are tannins uh, this is also beneficial for your triops as well. Um, we got some old aquarium decoration. It might have some beneficial bacteria on it. So that's all these little biological processes that are going to uh, that are going on in the couple in the upcoming two weeks. Uh, and in these two weeks, I'm actually going to um, may, uh, focus a little bit more on the uh, hatchery that will be floating on top of this aquarium. This uh, hatchery will be lighted by the uh, lid, uh, the, by the LED light that's inside the lid. It will be heated by the aquarium heater that's in the back. It's actually working right now, as you can see. Um, the bubbler will also help spread the uh, heated water throughout the whole uh, tank as well. And um, what we're going to do next is we're going to set up the hatchery. So setting up the hatchery will be uh, the other part. The aquarium is basically done right now. We are going to just leave this as is for about two or three weeks. Make sure that the uh, water quality is uh, on is fine for the traps, and um, we're going to focus on the hatchery now. That's uh, basically where the first two weeks uh, of our attention will be. We will be hatching the traps inside a separate environment because this tank has been filled up with. 50% reverse osmosis type water and 50% tap water. Tap water is not um, uh, suitable for hatching your triops. Triops will actually hatch uh, in rainwater uh, in nature, and rainwater is basically a water type that has almost zero minerals in it. So, uh, this tank is not going to be suitable uh, for your hatching your triops. Also, if the babies would hatch inside this tank, they would just get sucked into the filter and die. That's basically why we are going to use a uh, fully enclosed microwave dish 
uh, as a hatchery. I'm going to get that thing right now and uh, I'm going to uh, explain you guys what we are going to do to the hatchery to also uh, create a little bit of a suitable environment inside that hatchery for the Triops Nopoli, which are Triops babies. So I'm going to get the hatchery. So this is a hatchery. Uh, I use these microwave containers. Uh, its size is one liters and it's a quarter of a gallon for the American viewers. Um, this is a uh, transparent uh, microwave container. It's food safe. Uh, it has a little symbol on it that, that uh, tells me that it's safe to put in microwaves and stuff. Uh, the plastic is not toxic, so that's fine. I'm going to use a little egg ring. This comes from a um, soda bottle. I will explain what I use this for later. I got some uh, katepa leaf skeletons from my uh, 60 liter aquariums over there. It has uh, been uh, inside an aquarium, so you could use this as detritus. If you want to know more about detritus, I would like to recommend to watch another video on my channel. Uh, there is a video on my channel that explains how to create your own detritus. Detritus is used to um, acclimate the water inside your hatchery. Basically, if you just toss in some boiled rainwater, spring water, or reverse osmosis water, that's really uh, a bare environment for babies to grow up in. Uh, the babies will need some be beneficial bacteria, they will need some uh, micro foods uh, floating around growing inside the hatchery and that's what we are going to use this stuff for. It will actually create that kind of micro uh, life inside the little hatchery that we're going to use. Uh, I got some eggs, uh, I got a little stick for detritus as well. I got this uh, little stick as well. Uh, it has uh, been inside my aquarium, so I'm going to use this as detritus as well. Uh, there might have been growing some stuff on this little uh, piece of wood, and uh, that's something they, the tribes normally can eat from as well. So I'm going to go. I'm going to go ahead and add this to the hatchery first. Uh, I added uh, half a liter of. Um, uh, reverse osmosis water to the hatchery. You need something that's really similar to uh, rainwater uh, because that's what traps hatch in in nature. Um, next, some extra detritus for the little traps Napoli later on. You can go ahead add kinds of stuff, but don't add too much because traps Napoli actually also have a tendency to get stuck in this kind of stuff. So don't add too much. Uh, that's just a little tip for me. Um, adding the egg ring. Uh, why I add this little uh, plastic ring to the hatchery? Uh, the eggs of the traps will actually start to float, and if these eggs are floating up against the sides of your hatchery they will actually end up um, getting above the surface of your uh, water and that's a dry spot and they will actually not hatch so basically to concentrate the eggs in the middle of the hatchery I use this little ring to make sure they actually cannot escape the little ring and get stuck uh, on these on the sides of my hatchery where they will actually dry up and not hatch so that's just a little tip I use the egg ring uh, you can find a little bit more info on this in the uh, uh, floating hatchery method video on my channel as well. So that's uh, it. Uh, I'm going to add some eggs right now and then I will be placing the hatchery inside the tank and I will be explaining a little bit more uh, when we're up to so now that's done we actually have the hatchery inside the aquarium now where it will get uh, heated up by the aquarium heater um, as you can see uh, the egg ring is in there there are some eggs floating inside the egg ring right now let's see if we can spot some of them there are some eggs inside the egg ring right now but let's zoom in for a second oh there they are so these are the traps eggs, they are currently floating inside the egg ring right now. Uh, we're just going to need uh, about 24 to 48 hours for them to hatch. Um, so we'll be waiting for one or two days uh, and we will be seeing some little tiny orange dots moving around. And those will be, these will be the traps Napoli that we're going to wait for. Um, so the egg ring is okay, we got some detritus that's gonna soak and uh, release some beneficial stuff into this uh, little hatchery and um, 
to actually add some extra you can also add some extra leaf litter inside your aquarium to actually add some detritus to the aquarium when their tribes are a little bit older uh, I'm gonna do that a little bit later so I'm gonna skip that process right now but I got a bag of uh, leaf litter that I collected a while ago and um, that's basically what I'm going to add to the aquarium to create a little uh, little dirtier uh, kind of environment for the trials because they really like to uh, run around and dig around in these leaf uh, in this leaf litter and they also eat from it as well because trials also eat detritus and leaf litter as food so it's also like a tiny little beneficial food source for them um, that's basically what we're going to do next so I'm going to add uh, a little bit of leaf litter to the uh, hatchery and a little bit of leaf litter to the aquarium as well well, so the aquarium is lighted now. Um, that's basically also not a little subject I wanted to talk about a bit on. Um, we need some light to actually make sure that the triops will hatch. Triops will need uh, the triops eggs will actually need a light source, uh, which means that they are uh, floating at the top of the surface, ready for the next season, ready to hatch. So our triops eggs are currently uh, illuminated by the LED light. Um, but what kind of amount of time do they need to hatch? Uh, basically they need like one or two days to hatch and that's going to be based on a 16 hour light cycle. Uh, I also sometimes want to cheat a little bit and then I use a 24 hour uh, light cycle uh, for the first few days to actually give a little bit of a head start to the eggs to hatch. Uh, it's not necessary or mandatory, but you can do it that way. Uh, I'm going to uh, choose for the 16 hour light scheme today. Uh, you can buy a little uh, controller for the, um, for the wire. Um, this thing is going to uh, turn the lights on automatically for me and turn them off at night automatically for me as well. Uh, this is a little um, uh, time controller that I uh, attach to the LED light. So it's a little tip, buy one of these so you can actually get it automated. Uh, the lights will go on on the same time every day and they will go off on the exact time every day as well. Uh, make sure you dial it in uh, to have at least 16 hours of light because otherwise you might get some trouble or it will be a little bit, uh, it will take a little bit longer for them to hatch if you use less light. Um, uh, this 16 hour light time period, uh, I just tried it a couple of times with uh, different uh, amounts of time. 16 hours was probably the best I've tried. So I'm going to use 16 hours of light to, uh, this time again. Um, if you're going to use uh, 24 hours light, make sure uh, that you're going to expect some algae growth in your aquarium. Because algae will love to grow on that amount of light as well. Um, so that's basically it guys, um, we're, we just set up the whole aquarium, uh, we set up a hatchery, uh, if you want some more in-depth information, I've, like I said before, watch the other videos on my channel because uh, these videos are a little bit more in-depth videos, this is basically a little quick guide giving you guys an idea of how you could set up your tryout setup. Uh, instead of uh, keeping them inside these little tiny plastic uh, containers that they sell uh, commercially with the trials eggs, it's basically good enough for hatching, but it's definitely not good enough to keep them on the long term. So that's like one of my uh, biggest tips. Please consider an aquarium for your trials. It's going to be worth uh, buying the aquarium for your trials. Because now you will be able to see them inside the aquarium. You will be able to observe them, feed them, uh, get cool videos and photos of them. And that's basically why, what I always have been doing. Uh, the other reason for it being is that traps, if you keep them in two small containers, they will actually... Um, don't they will actually don't have enough room to grow in so they will stay smaller and they end up dying way earlier as well because eventually they cannot molt anymore uh, they can't change their exoskeletons anymore and they will possibly die because of it that's why i always recommend take a spacious tank for your traps it will be worth it 100 percent so guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, quick uh, setup of a trials tank. It's going to be the new colony after my holidays. I'm really excited to see some trials again. And uh, I will definitely do some extra videos after this one. Uh, if I missed something in this video, if I forgot something, I will possibly add some updates to this video later. And um, 
of to, to the channel later uh, but you guys if you got some questions feel free to drop them in the comments I will definitely try to reply to all of them uh, sometimes I might miss one but I'm always trying to do my best to help you guys out um, if you want some direct contact feel free to uh, look me look for my uh, Triassic Park trials page, page on Facebook uh, as Triassic Park trials you can find me on Instagram as well at with the tag um, at uh, Triassic underscore park and obviously we're on YouTube if you like to watch more of these videos feel free to subscribe to the Triassic Park Triops YouTube channel and I would really appreciate it as well if you would like to turn on the notification bell it will help the, tr uh, the channel uh, grow so I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope to see you guys next